singer named Justin Moore. We don't do a whole lot of bullshitting up here. We just get up here and play country music. Check, check, one, two. Welcome, everybody, back to the Justin Moore Podcast. Appreciate y'all tuning in with us this week. This would be the 19th episode of our season three. I'm your buddy, old pal, J.R. the Handler, coming from some different environment here, and we'll get into that here in a minute. But I want to welcome to the show, as usual, the namesake of this said podcast, my brother, the Arkansas singing Razorback, the softball, best softball coach in Grant County, my brother, Mr. J.M., what's going on up in Arkansas, Just? Oh, man, just waiting on it to rain. Uh, I think we're getting ready to have a storm, but it's been beautiful for so long, and it's beautiful right now, actually, but uh, it's supposed to storm on us here shortly. And with that storm, you know, storms can bring warmer or a little milder temperatures, and uh, for, fortunately for us, because it's been so hot and humid, uh, it's supposed to bring milder temps so love that but uh not happy to be back uh 19th of season three 19th episode that's crazy that's man. right hope you guys and gals yep. out there listening and watching um are having a wonderful day today and uh look forward to today's show we've got uh, i was trying to think back uh on our guest list is this our second uh female guest is that it uh outside of kate um we've we had laney on we've talked i've talked to a few but we hadn't it hadn't lined anything up yet uh, you know we try to line yeah. these up for when they have new stuff coming out and things <clears throat> like that and um right laney had a new record come out we had we had brent cobb on last week to preface father's day with his new book which came out right. and then carly's got new stuff in the works she just had a huge song New album out and all that stuff, so we we got that going. But yeah, I believe I believe that is is our second. We got yes, too many knuckleheads. So, we got to pretty this podcast up. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. So yeah, so uh, you got he he mentioned Carly. Our, our guest today is going to be Carly Pierce, uh, who we've we've known for a, a long time and um, who's just been on fire since about golly what twenty sixteen twenty seventeen something like that. She's been around forever, but, um, and, you know, we knew of her well before that and, and how talented she yeah. was, but, uh, but yeah, she's, she's had a really great run here in the last four or five years and, uh, looking forward to having Carly on. She's, uh, she's a, just a, a, a sweetheart and uh, super talented. So look forward to, to catching up with her. Appreciate her coming on. So you got that to look forward to, and then us knuckleheads will maybe yep. uh, recap uh, Father's Day. I'm curious to know how yours went. I had a, a pretty low key uh, Father's Day, which is is good. Um, but we'll get into the details of that after we talk to Carly. But uh, look forward to having her on for sure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I've met Carly once or twice in passing, but never got to really talk to her a whole lot. I always liked her music. Yeah, I know, you know, if anybody will get into it, I'm sure he knows her backstory. Yeah, she's been doing it. I mean, she's a lot younger than us, but she's been doing it about as long as we have because she got into the biz when she was young, young, and really worked young, out at yeah. Dollywood and all that. Yeah, worked out at Dollywood and did a bunch of bluegrass records. And then, yeah, she was on that album with Josh Abbott Band. I think that was about 16, and then she got her – then everything started mm-hmm. happening for her. And in 17, she had a big song. And then, yeah, she's been rocking. And then last year, her and our buddy, old buddy Lee Bryce, I'm wearing this shirt, so maybe she'll want to duet with me and I'll get me a number one out of the deal. Well, uh, I'm going uh, to give the, the, her some grief about that. Uh, I'll save it for okay. her. But um, Okay. But, uh, but yeah, yeah. They, had a, they had a big song last year. And I, I'm looking forward to catching up with her because I, I know about her. But, I, I'm look, you know, as usual, you, you get more into it once you talk with somebody. Even these guys we know and heroes of ours, once we have them on the podcast, you learn new stuff and things you didn't know. And um, I think that's always interesting. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to, to catching up with her. And she's going to jump on here with us in a little bit. But, yeah, Father's Day, like you mentioned, I'm down here. If anybody notices, I'm in strange surroundings today. I'm actually in my mother-in-law's guest bedroom down in Houma, Louisiana. I don't think this is – this is not the room where my, my wife grew up, but it feels like it. I got some pictures of her and her sister here. I'm going to show you all later. So got that going on. But, uh, yeah, we're down here for Father's Day. Um, to visit with her dad, you know, as, as, as you know, last week we had to do, a, we flew to do a show. I uh, flew back down here after Tulsa 
and um, we, we spent it down here. She needed to do some catching up, do some hair for family, uh, spend some time with her father, see my nephews, and we have a house still here in Homa, so I got I had to do some honeydew chores around here that I neglected the past few months. So we're down here, and like you were saying about the storms, I flew home during the storm, this tropical storm we had last week, and it rained that first day, and then Saturday was beautiful. The weather cooled off, like you were saying. The weather changed. It got real nice and cool and crisp. It wasn't as humid, but um, here we are recording today on on Monday, and it's it's steamy, thick, right? I mean, it's just as hot as it was before. South the storm Louisiana, came right so there. Hope, yeah. So hopefully, you get a little break for a little while, and uh, and uh, you'll get a little a little break, and you know, won't, it'll cool the temperatures off. Won't give you too too bad of storms. Won't knock trees down and stuff. But uh, but yeah, and I came too. I mentioned it last week. I came and actually participated this will roll over in our little sports segment i actually participated in a uh, my first ever keep them league as they call it in drafting uh, your fantasy football league I, I was eight of us we got over to buddy's house down here uh saturday and uh our buddy dave cooked a huge pot of jambalaya pork jambalaya was some of the best i've ever had uh we hit the pool we had some brewskis and um uh, yeah, we drafted a team. On this this league, you draft 40, 40 rounds. So it took us seven hours to draft forty rounds of players. Oh my gosh! So you got yeah. So you got thirty six Alabama players and uh, four Arkansas players. Is that about the ratio? I tried, brother. I these guys they hoodwinked me. I, they they're leaning on. I, I'll give you the whole thing, and you'll love this. I'll make it quick as I can. But uh, now I got twenty seven out of forty. Bama guys, though that is a true story. Um, and, 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 and if and you want to, and, and if you want to know why Alabama has won six of the last eight or whatever crazy number it is, he's got a fantasy football team with twenty-seven Alabama guys on it currently in and the I league, get a, and that's probably a third of what's in the league or or, or less. Yeah, yeah, or I didn't more, get everybody I wanted either. I didn't get Mac Jones. I didn't get Derrick Henry. I got Julio. I got I got some studs, no doubt. But yeah, so I've always used the strategy where I pick Bama guys because usually I draft with these guys in Louisiana and they don't want the Bama players. They you know talk smack. So I just get all the Bama players and ride or die with my Bama guys and usually do pretty good. Well, this year, everybody else got on the train. They all drafted some Bama guys and this and that. And you know the whole time, as upset as I am, I'm not getting my Bama guys in the back of my mind. And I told them this. I said, this still works for me. Because if you win, if somebody else wins the championship with Bama guys on their team playing a part, I still win. I don't win the pot, but it's a victory for right. me in Bama Nation. And if and everybody on every other, all other seven teams have someone from Bama on. There's not one team. There's not one team in this league that has a Bama guy on it. So if they win with Bama players, I'm happy. If I win with all Bama players, I'm even more happy because I have nobody from any of my schools I don't like on my team. There's no Auburn. There's no Notre Dame. There's no Penn State. There's no USC. There's no Tennessee. Uh, it's mostly Bama guys, so it's double. And since I didn't get everybody I wanted and I only have 27 out of 40, well, you get to drop players every year and draft new ones. So as upset as I am I didn't get a few, I'll just draft some more Bama guys next year, and eventually my roster will be absolutely full of Bama guys. And then it works – then it's even better because if they win, I win. If I win, I win. And no matter what, Bama wins. So I'm looking forward to this league. It's going to be fun. I don't know how the rules work. It's it's crazy. You start eleven defensive guys and seven offense, and uh, it's going to be interesting how to see it do it. And also, it's not one of the ones where you redraft every year. So you're not drafting just for this year the best players that are going to get points this year. You got to draft that's for the future because cool. you're going to keep. Yeah, you're hoping to keep these guys. So that's part of the reason I'm down here too. And we had a a great time doing it. Um, it was it was a whole lot of fun catching up with some buddies I hadn't seen in a while. And I'll keep everybody updated on how that rolls out the next. Yeah. Uh, quite, yeah, well, it'll be a couple of months before the season. Quite starts. honestly, Jr. was uh, he's not he's not uh, downtrodden uh, on the air right now, but he's a little disappointed because this was supposed to be a fishing trip to a fishing camp, kind of a, a whole two three day run of this stuff, and yeah. uh, it didn't it didn't work out that way because of the weather. But uh, but uh, I'm glad that you had to. You, you had an opportunity to at least uh, catch up, hang out, and have a good good night, uh, at least. Right. And yeah. I knew you probably. Yeah. We, book, we booked. I knew you had a pretty good night when you texted me at like one last night. Uh, I knew yeah, you probably right. had a pretty good night. Uh, but you were TCB. Right. Well, you were TCB. You, you t he didn't text me anything crazy. He said, "Hey, just uh, 
uh, uh, reminding you that we have Carly Pierce on tomorrow at, at, at X time. So you were still take care of business, but I know yeah. if you're up at that point texting me, you're probably having, having a good time. Yeah. Well, and I, cause I actually, I saw, uh, somebody posted a thing, um, yesterday about you doing a radio show we'll talk about that after yeah. carly but you doing uh hosting the, the radio show back home the sports show uh this morning and tuesday when i saw that i was like let me just make sure I, he sees his calendar that we got carly because yeah. we talked about it so anyway and some guests yeah, some, yeah I'm, some fans I, have asked because they're excited to see her too so yeah we'll we'll talk about what i'm i'm up to uh outside of this podcast and back to shows and all that i um i've uh, just briefly, I, I'm I'm co-hosting a, a sports talk show uh, the next couple of days uh, here uh, in Arkansas. But uh, yeah, anyway, yeah, I think she, I think I think actually Carly's beeping in now on the Zoom machine. Let's see if we can get her dialed up. Let's see. Hopefully, she's got better connectivity than we normally do. There she is. I don't know if she can hear us. And we can hear her. Oh, my God, it's Christmas miracle. It never works this easy. (laughs) How are you? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Justin Moore podcast, the wonderful and talented Miss Carly Pierce. Hey, guys, sorry about this, but we had a little glitch with Carly's audio. I actually forgot to hit the start on the Zoom machine today when she came on. So going to start this thing a little into our conversation. So bear with us. But here she is, Miss Carly Pierce. Right. Yeah, I told I told my wife that the other day. I, I said, you know, it's like I, I haven't done any well, you know, anything music related outside of outside of you know interviews and stuff through Zoom. I haven't done anything music related, and I'm like, I went on the road for a day or two and came back, and I it, it just like it took it out of me, and I'm like, golly, I guess I'm out of shape as far as that's concerned. I but I better get I better get back in shape quickly because like you said it's it's not like we're easing back into this thing we're launching back into it so that's good to hear from you guys as well i know we're going to be busy probably busier than i've been golly on the road in 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 the last six seven years this year uh, as a you know compared to the last six seven it's gonna it's full bore for sure when do you start like going we we've had a couple of weekends that were kind of light, you know, an acoustic thing here or there, and maybe a couple of shows. Uh, but we always take off the week of Fourth of July. One because it's Fourth of July, and two because my wife's uh, birthday is the fifth. So we always take that week off and um, spend some time at the beach. But the week following that, it's like go 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 go. So yeah. how about how about you guys? We kind of ease in starting this weekend, actually, and then pretty much gone starting July. So I uh, I talked to Ashley McBride and Kelsey, uh, and they both were just like, you know, I think we're just all going to have to give ourselves a little grace that we haven't done this in a long time, and it's okay. And it's kind of nice. Like you said, it's nice to feel like everybody kind of feels that way, because I right. kind of feel we had rehearsals, and I'm like, I got to remember how to do this. <laughs> No doubt about it, and, and I'll, I'll be honest with you, the first two or three times we went out there and, and played, um, especially full band, I mean, acoustic, a little bit the same way, but but especially full band, and you got to play a longer set and all that, I thought, man, I don't know if I know how to do this anymore. Like, I'm, I might have lost it, but it, it's not to sound artsy fartsy about it or whatever, but it's pretty magical how you just walk on stage and – you don't think about it. It just happens. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty. So have you not played at all? I haven't done any full band. I've done a few acoustic things and then I play at the Opry. But other than that, it's been all Zoom or just acoustic stuff. So right. we'll see how it goes. Yeah. Easing in well, a 75 minute set. I was worried about I, the yeah. first few times I was really concerned about remembering all the lyrics. So I just put my cell phone in my back pocket as a backup. <laughs> <laughs> that's smart i had to revert to myself in a few times during rehearsals last week i was like how does this song go i'll remember it yeah there you go there you go we were um we were talking before you came on um kind of how you you got started in music like super early super young age like uh a kid right i mean 
Yeah, and I mean, my favorite story about you in particular is that your band, your manager was so sweet to me when I first moved to town, Pete, and your yeah. band was so gracious to go in the studio and cut music with me for nothing, for no money, for nothing, just for the good of, of helping a young girl out. But I'll, I'll never forget that. So you have great people around you. Thank um, you. But yeah, I started singing really young, grew up on bluegrass um, and like traditional country and was from Kentucky, fronted a bluegrass band when I was a kid and did that through high school. And um, when I was 16, I saw an audition to sing at the country show at Dollywood and asked my parents if I could quit high school <laughs> and they let me, <laughs> which is insane for me to think about now as an adult. Right. Um, I did finish school, but I did it in between my shows at Dollywood. Um, so I've always, always wanted to do this. That's so awesome because, and, and it's so rare um, that that parents say yes to that. And I, I have a similar story, but mine was quitting college um, after two weeks of college. It didn't really do me much good. And I came home and told my parents I wanted to move to Nashville because I wanted to be a country singer. And, you know, I mean, nine out of ten parents would go, take your ass back to the school and or whatever. And they were like, all right, cool. Let's let's. If you want to give this a whirl, give it. Let's let's do it. Do it while you're single and young, and um, you can always go back to school. That kind of thing. So I've always now me being a parent, I've always found that maybe I took that for granted back then. But like looking at it now, I'm like that's that was pretty amazing. And uh, it goes without saying, and I'm sure you would agree that without their support, it wouldn't. We wouldn't be sitting here talking right now. But I moved to Nashville when I was 18. You moved there when you were 19. Yep. I knew one person. I knew Pete. That was literally it. Um, yep. And so, for for those out there listening and watching, um, Carly and I. Did he manage you for a while? Yeah, when I we first shared moved, a manager yeah. for for yeah. A, a, a little while and. So did you know anybody when you moved there or were you completely solo like I was? I knew one songwriter, um, Jeremy Spillman, when I first moved to town. And luckily he helped me. I feel like I had, I'm sure you feel similar, just a little bit of an end to how it all worked. Um, he right. really helped me with early on co-writing. I had never co-written anything before. I'd always written by myself and just kind of helped me to start to meet people within the industry because it's so overwhelming, especially for me. And I'm sure for you, you were probably the singer where you were in Arkansas. And for me and Dollywood, it was like, we were the big fish in a tiny pond. And then you moved to Nashville and you're like about this big, right. in a huge pond. And so it was really overwhelming for me to have that shift. In right. The beginning. Yeah. Culture shock uh, for sure yes. as well on top of, of that, you know, but yeah, I, I, and I'm sure you you were the same as me. I mean, there were there were times where, in the first few years especially, I'm going, what in the world am I doing here? I mean, I'd be sitting alone in my crappy apartment, uh, you know, and and had just hit another dead end somewhere, and I'm going, what? Well, you know, all my buddies are in college and they're having a blast, and one of them's playing baseball at Arkansas, and the other one's over here doing this, and they're sending me you know, videos of partying, and and I'm like, I'm just sitting here by myself in my apartment trying to write a song, yep. you, know, <laughs> you know, so thinking yeah. I'm crazy, uh, thinking I'm absolutely certifiably insane, um, but obviously uh, it was for, for good reason, and it worked out for, for both of us, but uh, but yeah, and you then you, um, you recorded a lot of music before that, but it, I mean, really, you, you, I, I was saying before you came on, you, you caught fire, what, four or five years ago, I guess it, it was mm -hmm. with, uh, uh, with every little thing, I think it was. I mean, yeah, I, 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 had, I know you had deals before that as well, too. I had a lot of, um, <laughs> really close calls that I had a record deal, um, when I was 22 and, I got to the point where people had met with me so many times for people at home. It's kind of like you, you meet people at the record labels and you kind of don't have that many chances with them because they get used to who you are. Well, I probably met with them three, four or five times over the years. And it got to the point where people were telling me to move home because they were just like, I really just don't think it's going to happen for you. And they thought my music was dated and that, Oh, you would have been so great in the nineties. And I'm like, what? I was so, 
lost. Um, Which now is a huge compliment. I know. I'm like, see guys, I was doing, it's so funny because I feel like the music that I'm really putting out right now is what I always wanted to do. And that they Mm -hmm. told me was like not going to happen. Um, but yeah, I wrote every little thing truly kind of for myself. I'm a huge Alison Krauss and Union Station fan and her song, let me touch you for a while is one of my favorite songs. And it's just like this haunting song with the dobro and her voice and it. And I wanted to write my version of that. And so I wrote every little thing kind of just a haunting ballad, um, loved it, played it for some record labels. They were like, cool, pretty song bye. Um, and then Sirius X and the highway, uh, J.R. Schumann got a hold of it. And he was like, this song's going to change your life. And I was like, J.R., this is a heartbreak ballad from a female that nobody knows. Absolutely not. You can't play this song. And he played it. And it was like overnight. It, it was the craziest. To this day, that whole experience was the craziest thing of really one song can change everything. That's awesome. That's so cool. I mean, you. Lo- I, mean, I love hearing stories like that. I mean, I... And everybody turned it down, and everybody. I remember before I signed my deal that I'm in now. I, I, I had been offered, I had been turned down by like ten different people, and then I got offered a, a record deal. Uh, but the stipulations were, in order for me to sign this deal, I, I, I had to get rid of my producer, and I didn't have any songs according to this particular record label. Uh, well, that that album was my first album which had i don't know how many hit three or four hits on it and sold whatever and and i'm like yeah see yeah. f you yeah. i knew i was right which is i mean yeah i'm sure you ha- you've had those moments oh don't you love though now like when you're out like at an award show or something and you see those same people and you yeah. don't even have to say anything to them they just look at you and they're like I was wrong. I'm yeah, like, you just kill them. Yeah. Okay. yeah, hey, how are you? Great to see you. It's been yeah. so long since you turned me down. Since Great. you told me to move home and I cried yeah. in the car. <laughs> yeah, bye. Uh, that's funny y'all talk about that, and it brings Pete in there too. Recently, we were in Nashville a month or two ago, and Pete had a plaque, Carly, and it was a letter that he had sent when he first managed Justin to his first trying to get Justin a deal, and it was to oh, – yeah. uh, I won't say the, the the label, but it was to some legends in the business, a label. And they sent a letter back saying, hey, yeah, I think he's great, but we're just full right now. You know, just don't see it where it would work for us. But, you know, best of luck. Kind I'll of say thing. it. It was RCA. And frame that, yeah. And he still has the plaque, and that was dated. You know, and, and if you look at the dates, Justin was like 18. I don't even think he'd moved to town yet. And they sent back saying that. But now we have it framed on the bus to where it's like yeah. – don't don't let anybody shoot your dreams oh. down because this could have he could have stopped right then. It's like, well, if these are the best in town, they're they don't want it. I'm probably not going to work. And then, obviously, for both of you guys, they told y'all no, and it's obviously worked out both pretty good for both. Well, of and you that's guys. that's why for me it's so important for me to share that part of my story with people because yes, we're artists and we're country singers, but that goes for anybody who's chasing any kind of dream in their life. You you really do sometimes feel like it's never, ever going to happen. And it's just in the right timing sometimes that it's going to happen. Yeah, for, for sure. Yeah. And for me, I know um, it was kind of when I decided, you know, I put all this pressure on myself moving from a small town to Nashville and everybody here supporting me, but thinking that I'm out of my mind at the same time, like he's going to, uh, okay. Yeah. He's going to be a country singer or whatever. Um, I'm sure, you know, and um, and so I'm thinking, boy, I can't move home, you know, and not at least have gotten a deal or had one song out that went to 40 or you know, whatever, something. And it was kind of when I, I said, screw it, you know, I can control what I can control and, uh, you know, let the chips fall where they may, where it kind of started working out for me. And I think that is true for for like you said, uh, any business, any goal, any dream you have, just just focus on making it whatever uh, you know, controlling what you can control, and, and be the best at whatever the position, or make the best music, or whatever, and then kind of you know, don't don't worry yourself to death. I I did that early on too when I you know first started putting songs out and. We'd have a hit, and then we'd have one that missed, and then we'd have a couple of hits, and then we'd have one that missed. And I used to watch charts like crazy every week going, you know, every day, actually, and losing my mind over 
why ain't so-and-so playing this more? And it, this one's playing it over here, and it's testing good. And I finally got to the point, I'm like, I'm going to drive myself nutty if I keep Stop. doing this. So I just stopped. I just yep. completely stopped. I don't read reviews uh, on Apple, iTunes. I don't read critics' reviews. I don't, I don't give a shit. I just yep. do the best I can do, and, and then whatever happens, happens. I need to get a little better about that. Maybe I'll... You're a chart young, watcher, aren't you? My young artist age, I'll get better once I've had as much success as you. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm like, well, I well, watch well. all of it. And it does. It drives you insane. Or I can read one comment on social media out of, you know, however many. And this person's probably sitting in their parents' basement just being a troll. And right. it yeah. wrecks my whole day. <laughs> Yeah, he had to tell me the same thing about his stuff because I was getting hot with other people. I'm like, y'all are talking about my buddy and y'all don't even know him. And it, it's same thing. It'd be one out of the 50 positive ones. It's the one thing and I'm on it. And he's like, JR, JR, don't just don't yeah. look. Don't say nothing. It don't matter. You know, don't worry about yeah. it. So, yeah, we all we all could get a little better than that. And I, did, I hell, I did it with the podcast for a while. And then when I quit looking, then everybody you know, get all these new comments on, you know, a new star ratings. And then we're in the charts now. And I'm like, well, we did better when I quit hey, looking. You know, you know uh, how many, uh, it's my girls, by the way, Carly. You're, I still remember some of my yeah. early shows, your little girl. I, I think it's your oldest and just her personality. I can't. She's yeah. so... She's she's a she's, she's a, a tree. They're all crazy uh, now. But um, I was where what I was where I was going with that is, guess how many social media accounts uh, apps I have on this phone? None. Zero. Oh, I bet that it's zero. Just better. <laughs> now I approve the stuff that comes comes out and all that, but it. I would drive myself batty if I, you know, yeah. so anyway, I know, I know people don't love hearing that, but I, I approve it all and all that, but um, I, you can just drive yourself crazy. Uh, with you that. absolutely can. And I always say, you know, everybody's posting their highlight reel, so you don't really know what's going on. But the highlight reel, if you see somebody else get something that you want, I mean, I just like right. go down a rabbit hole on everything. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, they 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 send the video when when they when or the picture when there is something on the way. Nobody sends the picture when their song gets killed or <laughs> right. something bad yeah. happens. Exactly. No, they don't they don't when they don't show it when it gets the bullet, exactly. you know. Uh, and talk about watching the charts though. It could have probably was fun for you last year because you and Lee watched one just rocket up to the number one song in the of the year last year. So that probably watching last year wasn't so bad. Yeah, I, got a, I got a bone to pick with you about that, but go ahead. Uh-oh. I'm laughing at you having Lee Bryce shirt on. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I told Justin before you came on, I was going to wear this in hopes maybe you'd want to do a duet with me and I get my Come first Come on, let's go. Oh, my gosh. I mean, right. honestly, that song, I remember playing it for a PD. So I wrote this song and was like, I want Lee Bryce to sing this song. Literally don't know anything about him. <laughs> Asked, he sang it. Cool, great. So I remember going to a radio station when I was on tour i think with jason aldean and we played it for them and the pd looked at me and he goes don't you think it's kind of weird that you have a random song with lee bryce this is kind of weird and i remember being like oh my god can we put this song out like can we do it and then it was like oh we love this song <laughs> it was so but it, people were like what they were so confused at first and so just to see what it did is so awesome for me because i remember in those beginning first few weeks of it people were like this is kind of a weird pairing i was like what yeah yeah it's, yeah it's it a works. great song and, and y'all cut the the crap out of it and i you know what i loved about it um for, on, from from lee's perspective he sang in a higher register than he normally does and i know he can do that because he's an incredible singer i mean his range is off the charts good as is yours uh but I loved him in that upper register, and your voice and his up there to me was was money. And my bone to pick with you is, I was a little perturbed that you you immediately wanted to do that song with him rather than me. I I loved the song, and I'm like, I would have been perfect for that song. Honestly, not even kidding. 
there are so few male artists that could have sang that song. And you and Lee were like the two that I was like, these two can sing it. They can pull <laughs> off the range. They're country. They're not trying to be country. They are country. Right. Seriously. So, oh my gosh. Well, Don't Lee, Lee had a turn. So next time you, you write that <laughs> type time, of song. There you come go. on. Oh. Hey, off topic. Right. How's the uh, last time Carly and I played a, an acoustic something together I, I don't even really know what it was it was some kind of the uh, streaming thing or it was the week of the cmas last year and it was right in the thick of covid and everything and you had some horrible accident with your teeth or lip or something so i'm sitting in i this... forget i forget specifically what it was but uh, remind me well it was i, I remember sitting there and my lip was still kind of messed up and i was with you and brantley and riley green and i was That's like right. yeah. i need to just tell these guys in case they think like i got really bad lip injections or something <laughs> something happened to me <laughs> and so i was like hey guys like four days ago i bust i fell down concrete stairs and knocked my two front teeth out and i had to get oh 12 stitches in my mouth and i it was like the week of cmas it was my first time to play on the show i was singing i hope you're happy now and i was like and they're like, what happened to you? And I'm like, yeah, it was four days ago. And they're like, what? Because it didn't look. And so I showed them all the photos and I felt for once, I was like, yeah, look at me. I'm tough. Brantley was like, yeah, dear so gosh. <laughs> yeah. yeah I'm I, mean, okay. I had to get three root canals after the CMAs. Oh um, it's been gosh. a journey. But my lip, like my mouth is finally all, it was crazy. I, I You should have. It was bad. I was gonna say you should have told him you were playing with Brantley's uh, brass knuckle microphone and caught yourself in the mouth with his. He brass literally knuckle. was like, "You should have told him you got fat and won." I was like, <laughs> "I probably wouldn't have won." I so. for, I, I, yeah, I forgot the circumstances around it, but it, it was it snow or ice or something like that, and you, it was dark. And I was wearing really high heels and was carrying food down stairs, and so. I tripped, didn't see a step, and if they were concrete stairs, no lights, and I was carrying food, so I couldn't catch my fall. Yeah, your your was, teeth did. Yeah. Did you yeah. save any of the food? Did you save any of the food? No, nope, didn't save any food. No, nope, yeah. everything went everywhere, including my teeth. My teeth were probably in the food at that point. But was, I, I I remember us doing that, and I I think maybe that was possibly the first time you had sang with the the partial in or something it was. like that. Yes. I felt I just felt so bad for you. I was like, oh my gosh, it's horrible. Like it was bad. I was and like, I've I had, feel like I'm in a list. And I've had stitches inside my mouth twice because I had braces and played sports and got hit with balls and elbows and it's not a lot of fun at all. No, I almost JR you like this. So I couldn't figure out after it happened something was in my mouth and I went and I looked in the mirror and I had almost bit through my mouth when I hit. So I like, it was just like a huge chunk of my lip. Oh my so I called gosh. Scott Borchetta through it. and I was crying and I go, hey, you know how I'm playing the CMAs in five days? And he was like, yeah, what's wrong? I'm like, you gotta help me get this under control. And I sent him a phone and he was like, what happened? I'm like, oh help my me. Gosh. <laughs> he would expect, so well, he's, he's, he's the head of, uh, both of our record, like, wh who, where are you signed? Big Mich BMR. Okay, so Carly and I are, are label mates. That's mm -hmm. kind of an industry term. We're on the same group of record labels, under the same people, all that. And uh, he would expect that from, like, Brantley is also there, and Riley, actually. But uh, he would expect that from, like, me or Brantley, but, but probably not from you. Uh, and so now every time funny. I do anything, he'll send me a text like the ACMs, and he's like, "Please put yourself, lock yourself inside before this show." I'm like, "Got uh, it. Won't won't fall because I am a klutz and a half." <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll we'll make sure to we'll make sure to to bleep out where it actually what when you tell what happened, and so from now on, tell everybody you did get in that fight, and we'll just go with that story. Yeah, you I, it sounds I had, way better. You ought to see the other yeah, guy, I had a or couple, girl. You know. Yes. Right. Well, a, a couple of years ago, I had a similar thing, not not near as crazy as having to go on and play a show or anything, but I was I was supposed to be going out of town, and I actually in, in home of where I'm at now, I had a, a bicycle wreck and broke my ankle real bad. First bone I'd ever broke at like 39 years old. I called Justin as I'm in the 
a, a, a somebody who was just having me riding by picks me up in a van to, or no actually my wife came and got me in, in our van at the time and uh, I call him and I'm like it's not good buddy it's not good and he thinks something's like terribly wrong one of my family members or something yeah I'm thinking his like, mom what, man? his wife's been in a car accident it's he's like crying and emotional he's like it ain't good man it ain't good and I'm like what well, calm down and tell you know I you know having four children I've learned that they can kind of blow things out of proportion and I'm like <laughs> calm down take a deep breath and what what do i need to do do i need to fly somewhere be with you or yeah and then he proceeds to tell me he had a bicycle wreck he's like my ankle yeah. hurts he's like, <laughs> yeah yeah he's like a bicycle well and and be honest with you i was more upset because i was supposed to like I, this was the day i was supposed to fly out to go meet him for a show so I was more upset that i was gonna have to miss a show because i hadn't missed a show in like 12 oh years oh my gosh I was like, so now, day, fly dates, I don't do anything where I could possibly get lost, injure myself, just not make my fly. I don't do anything. But he told the same thing. He said, don't tell anybody it was a bicycle. Just say it was a bike. And when they say, yeah, tell them it was your hog, your Harley there or something, go. not a pedal bicycle. And he's pretty much forbade me to ride a bicycle as an adult from now on. Yeah. So, uh, so anyway, you got to get a better story because that's, that's what he told me, too. And I, I thought about it. I was like, yeah, that would have sounded better. But I was just trying to be honest. You know, How long have you guys worked together? Uh, this is my eighth year working for Justin. Before that, I was Party's tour manager, and then um, we, I got him a production manager, and I went to help Justin. That was be this year be eight years. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and um, it's been a good ride. And that was that was the only one I've missed from that. I missed no no party shows I ever missed. I missed a pair of shows back in way back in the day when I worked for Wayne Mills, probably sixteen years ago. And uh, between that time, I hadn't missed any shows, and I broke my streak and broke my ankle, and now I've got eight pins oh. and, a, and a plate and all this ridiculousness and yeah it was just but like you said i, I wish I'd, i wish i'd had the story where i was you know coming out of a building saving some orphans and you know <laughs> I, you know something better but i, I didn't have one of those have yeah. you ever hurt yourself uh, but it's all, yeah uh, you know uh, probably uh, relating it to music the the worst was the very first headlining tour we ever did was in 2013 we had I think we had Hauser and Josh Thompson out with us. And the first show was in St. Joseph, Missouri. And our catwalk was shorter than what we had rehearsed on because of the venue. And I didn't realize it. And like two songs in, I, I fall, I walk right off the stage. And I fall on my ribs onto a bicycle rack which for those out there listening is the barricade between the fans and the stage. I get back up on stage. I try to pretend it didn't happen, you know, whatever. I make some yeah, you stupid gotta play joke. It all that yeah. cool. Try to try to look cool. I don't think I've ever looked cool, but you get what I'm saying. Um, and then two songs later, I do it again. I spilt the same guy's beer two times. And anyway, it's really, really hurt me. Like the next day, I go to the uh, doctor, go to the hospital. Uh, I broke three ribs. Uh, first, first headline tour, first night. It, it actually might have been John out with us. I, I forget who was on that tour, but, um, but yeah, it, ridiculous, ridiculous. Um, yeah so yeah it was i think it was your second headlining tour because i was out may have been, was, that uh, may have been john that may have du been the case it was, yeah it was john and dustin lynch then you and then i actually worked yeah. for you full time by this point because it was in that building because we'd got there a week early for rehearsals That's right. and we had it marked and everything with the glow tape and all that and yeah he walks right off just, the front just of the walked stage off. twice just walked first right show I and i saw twice. him hit it and i'm yeah, and I saw him hit it, and I thought, "Oh man, right yeah. where he hit." I said, so That's I finally, bad. I, I mean, could have punctured the, a this, along, the second you know? time I got up, I'm like, "Clearly, I can't look cool to you guys anymore." Uh, you know, uh, whoever got that on, oh, this guy some yeah, beers. Get, get this guy a couple of beer, uh, and uh, I can't wait to see this on YouTube. And, uh, and there you go. So, have you ever fell off the stage? Thankfully, no, but I really can't believe I haven't because Don't. I'm not kidding you. I am a klutz. Yeah, now I'm going to be so fearful. I'm going to think about you when I get to the end of the catwalk. And then that, that ain't the and, well, they, and that ain't the first time or the only time. And I, I know Luke had a pretty good spill a year or so ago. Uh, we were out with Paisley years ago, and 
he didn't fall off the stage, but he fell like I don't even know how he did it. He fell like twenty foot playing guitar and like skidded, uh, and they took him to the. I mean, yeah, it's it happens. Uh, so and of course everybody well, goes, oh, they were hammered. It, it, you know as well as I do. It's so dark up there, and you're yes. trying to play to the crowd and look at the crowd, and you're trying not to look down. Yes. I mean, but it, it's it's not hard to do, is my totally. point. With the spotlight in your face. Yes, yeah. and the all the thing. lights yeah. going. Yeah, I totally – I can't believe it hasn't happened yet to me. Right. <laughs> so, but – Yeah, it's – it's one of them things. It's uh, it's it, it can happen. And well, and you know, you think about that. You're talking about the '90s earlier, and everybody wondered why all those '90s and all the legends just stood right there in front of the mic stand with their guitar, never danced, never moved, never went to the front of the stage. They didn't want to fall off stage. Smart. One of their buddies probably, did. yeah, they're like, we'll just do it like this. And hey, and I gotta ask too. I know, I know, you've got tons of stuff to do. I was talking with your manager earlier. And I guess you're in Nashville, get ready for uh, rehearsing for some for some tour stuff and some CMA stuff and all kinds of fun stuff. Uh, but the few things I had real quick, one was talking about the nineties and I know the first time Pete ever played me your music. Cause I was working with those guys then I thought, and it makes sense because I looked at some stuff recently and saw where she was when he influenced, but I thought she reminds me of Patty yeah. Loveless. And, and she, Patty's one of my all time. I mean, there's a, there's 12 in that group of gals from that era that are some of my all time favorites. And she might be my number one. Uh, change, change, shackled and change. I mean, that's as good as it gets, you know. But uh, Kentucky I heard girl. that the first time, and I thought about, yeah. And then I didn't know you were from Kentucky, really. And then, and then that all made sense. Like, oh yeah, the Kentucky connection and this and that. And then I saw. So I, I know you'd mentioned Allison Krauss, and obviously I just mentioned Patty. But going back into that '90s stuff, is that the is that where you got your sound from? Is because you were influenced that you were a big fan of all those in that era? Yes, I, I loved them. I loved um, Leanne Womack, Trisha Yearwood. Those were just the Sarah, Sarah Evans. Um, that was like the era that I grew up on that I was obsessed with that I would kind of try to emulate when I was a kid. And, you know, my producer, my late producer, Busby, he passed away from brain cancer. And actually the, the last song that he worked on was I Hope You're Happy Now. But I think wow. what was so amazing about just that exchange is he opened the door to really let me solidify that 90s sound. Busby was a pop producer from the, from the Bay Area. And I think that he and I, we made some amazing music together, but I think he was only going to be able to go as far country as I hope you're happy now. But that allowed me to really step into what I'm doing now, which is extremely country. Um, and this is the music that I grew up on, that I wanted to do when people tell me that I remind them of Patty Loveless. It makes me feel like I can die happy. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. And and uh, next girl's doing good for you, huh? Yeah. And for me, that song was me kind of thinking about "Blame It on Your Heart" and all those songs, the the mm -hmm. Patty female anthems that I loved so much. So, um, yeah. That's I don't know. Awesome. You'll have to keep watching because I, I don't know. You know how much I love Patty. Um, I might. Have, I don't know. Maybe Patty and I are going to sing together. I don't know. Oh, there you uh -oh. go. That'd there be you no. Go. I love Patty Loveless as well. And uh, mentioned, you know, both of you guys are from Kentucky. There's, I mean, there's so many incredible artists from Kentucky uh, through the years. Yeah. I mean, it just I, second to none as far as the amount of really awesome music, in particular country music, uh, coming from from Kentucky. Well, your favorite too, Justin uh, Dwight Yoakam. Yeah, Kentucky Dwight's guy. my favorite artist of all time. Mm. So good. So, yeah. You know, and I was thinking about this earlier when y'all were talking about, you know, be, people thinking you're crazy from your hometown or your parents letting you go do it. And I, I, I was reading, um, we've got a guest coming on next week, Carly, William Lee Golden from the Oak Ridge yeah. Boys, uh, The Beard. So, And I was reading a part of his book, and he was mentioning – one reason he thought he could make it was because when he was a teenager, uh, Hank Lachlan um, had become a big star, and he was from Bruton, Alabama, where he was from, and he was like, well, somebody can make it. Nobody nobody really thought they could make it, but he's like, well, Hank Lachlan made it, and he's from here, so I can make it too. I can be a big star too. So I was wondering that, and I know where Justin's from, not really in his area. There wasn't anybody he was saying, well, 
you know, because Tracy wasn't really from right where he's from, or, or um, Colin wasn't really right where he's from. So was there someone from your town or your county? I know all you Kentucky cats like Roger and them. It's county, you know. It's like we're from so-and-so county, East Kentucky, West Kentucky, yeah. so-and-so. Was there somebody there that you saw go make it, or was it when you went – to Dollywood, because I know you're in the long lineage of people from Dollywood that go on to Nashville and have success, whether it be writing or playing or as an artist or producer or backstage and all that. So was there somebody that you saw come along and do it, or did you just have that fire inside without knowing? You know, I think somebody that, especially for my, I think the females of my generation that doesn't get talked about a lot, she's not from where I'm from, but Leanne Rhymes, um, was close to my age and she was so young. And I just remember thinking, I, I used to sing all her music in school talent shows. I sang, I just loved her, saw her in concert several times in, in the Kentucky, Cincinnati area. And I remember thinking if she can do it, she's my around my age, she's young, then I can do it. And so I think she was such a pivotal moment of like, oh wait, you don't have to be so, you know, cause I loved Shania and I loved all that, but they were a lot older than me, but she was a kid. And I think that gave right. me a little bit more of the confidence to go to Dollywood and chase it. Yeah. And to wrap a bow on that, it, I, I would, I would venture to say you would agree with me, Carly, like once you get into this and you have success um, and you meet other artists who maybe you were fans of forever and become friends with or whatever, you go, damn, they were, they're normal. Just like, I me I mean like like the most common thing that people tell me in meet and greets is they go why do you seem so normal I'm like hell because I'm normal I don't I don't know I, I I'm just, just a person I just I'm a fan of country music and if if I wasn't on stage looking out at the audience at a country show I'd be in the crowd looking up at the guy on stage or the or the girl on stage like I, it's just what I love and and so yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, it, we, and I, I say this all the time. I don't know if, if you're the same way, but when I look in the mirror, I just still, still see me. I don't see like the, you know, the guy that everybody else sees. And so, yep. and I'm still scared of my, my dad. So that, that keeps me, which uh, is probably a good grounded. Man. Yeah. So, but I know, Hey, I know right. you got to go, you got stuff to do and, uh, just want to say how much I, I respect and appreciate you and your music and, and um, always being so kind. And thank you for being generous with your time. And um, really, really enjoyed catching up with you. Glad you're doing well and glad you're getting back out there. And, and um, glad that Next Girl's doing good and and nothing but continued success. Hopefully we'll play some, some festivals or something like that together, um, you know, from this point forward. Uh, this year and uh, I don't know if you have anything else uh, to plug uh, new music or anything like that we got an exclusive uh, with the I know. Uh, I'm potential duet stuff, so just, um, keep watching there you I'm go on a lot of stuff. but seriously I'm such a fan you have one of the best country voices that has ever been in our genre and um, I'm I'm just grateful to be here so thank wow you that. that's very kind of you to say I appreciate that I mean it yeah, I've been I've been enjoying it. For everybody out there, Carly's new record that just came out this year is 29. Y'all make sure to go get it. She's got some new cool stuff. We'll bring her back on to drop this exclusive when we when we when it's concrete here in a while. But y'all go make sure to get that. Go to carlypierce.com, go to her socials, uh, keep up with her that way. Um, I had a few quick things I wanted to get out of here before we get you out. One is we talk about sports on here too. And you being from Kentucky, being a hotbed of sports, are you uh do you wear blue or red? Are you Louisville or are you Kentucky? I'm Kentucky. I Kentucky my, some blue, of okay. my family would probably kill me for that. But yes, I'm I believe blue. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I got it. I get it. I get. Hey, heck of a basketball program usually. Not so much in yep, football, but definitely so a good basketball program they usually. Know their <laughs> right. What What about football? Do you Do you pull pro football or college football? Any? You got a pro football I team? I don't. My family. My family is all um, from Indiana, so my my grandfather always liked the Colts. So I just always say, I mean, I'll I'll do that because my pap all said. <laughs> there you go. 
That, hey, that's a good one. Pat Paul's Pat usually aren't too, can usually steer you in the right direction. Uh, the only other thing I got I, I want to do here is something we do every week, every week with our guests, Carly, is we do the number one song in country music on the day you were born. Oh. So, so say for me, I was born September 11, 1979, so the number one song in the country that week was Conway Twitty's I May Never Get to Heaven. Okay. Justin was born 33084, and his was Alabama's Roll On 18 Wheeler classic which is funny because my artist that sang mine is from arkansas and his artist that sang his is from oh, alabama that's so really that's funny, funny how, yeah because we because we both bleed red um and does anybody want to stay take a stab on april 24th i won't say the year but it was uh in the 90s the 90s. uh does anybody want to take is it is in the 90 would did anybody mm-hmm. want to take a stab at what was april male, 20, or, male april. or female it's a male, and it's kind of – I mean, he had some huge hits. He's not one of your standard, you would think, country stuff. You won't ever be lonely, but Andy Griggs. That's in the vein, but no, sir, close. Oh, I was going to say, but you – I was going to say, like, Colin Ray or Vince or something, so. Still kind of in there. It was Dan Seals. Okay. Oh, Everything that glitters is not a, gold. Love on oh. Arrival. That was it. Was the one? It was the one after that. Yeah, it was his next hit after that. Oh, so yeah, Dan Seals a good one. Yeah, you never know on these what it's going to be, but that's a, that's. A good I love one too. that. That's awesome that y'all do that. Yeah, glad I know that. Yeah, now. very cool. Yeah. Well, tell everybody we said, hey, stay safe out on the road. I'm going to make sure um, that you've got my number. So like, seriously, if your parents ever need anything, I'm there. My wife's there full time. So I fly home in and out of there every week. Um, if you get down, come over to the floor of Bama. We'll get you set up over there with, you know, whatever you guys need over Thanks. there. And uh, seriously, if they ever need anything, let me know. I've got, I'm from down there. I got I tons of buddies and friends and whatever you could possibly need. I appreciate need, so that sure. so much. Thank you. Seriously, and then like I said, we'll bring you back on in a couple of months whenever you got some new stuff or whenever you want to. You just I let us know. I love that. This has been a blast. Anytime, and we got to play shows together so we can. Yes, sing. absolutely. So we'll hey, good luck on, on y'all can work on that duet y'all are going to do go. together. Yep. Hey, good luck on the, getting back on the road, and uh, I hope it's uh, seamless for you. And um, and again, congrats on everything, and thanks so much for your time. Of and, course. Uh, keep your teeth in your head. I'm going to keep my teeth in and not fall <laughs> off of the catwalk. There we go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Quit, quit, quit fighting gangs on your on your day off. You're, I know we all know you're a superhero. But you ain't got to do you're it all. A badass, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> that's right. All right, thank you everybody. That's Carly Pierce Thanks, Carly. on the Justin Moore podcast. Yeah. Y'all go check her out at CarlyPierce.com and get her new record. Carly Pierce, y'all. Uh, she's she's a sweetheart and super talented, and I appreciate her spending some time with us for sure. That was fun. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> Well, you want to take a quick little break, Just, and we'll yeah, come back and we'll, we'll chop it up for a minute? Yep, go tear <laughs> it up. We'll be right back here in a minute, guys. Wait, give us a sec for our sponsors here. We'll be right back on the Justin Moore Podcast. Hey, guys, I'm so excited to announce an awesome opportunity with one of our sponsors, Bobcat Company. Today, we're announcing the Straight Out of the Country giveaway where you can enter to win one of three pieces of Bobcat equipment. They're giving away a Bobcat compact tractor, a Bobcat zero-turn mower, and a Bobcat utility vehicle. The utility vehicle, also known as a UTV, is one that I've been using on my tour, and I can tell you it's a great machine and one you would be so lucky to take home. To learn more about the giveaway and to submit your entry, go to bobcat.com country. Hey, what's up, guys? Justin Moore here. I want to remind everyone out there listening Uh, that my wife Kate has an awesome children's clothing boutique in downtown Benton, Arkansas at Central Arkansas. So if you're local, come see us at 119 West South Street in downtown historic Benton, Arkansas. Uh, Again, that's 119 West South Street in Benton, Arkansas. And if you're not local, we ship everywhere. So uh, you can find us at shopthislittlepiggy.com and see all that we have to offer all that my wife Kate has to offer, I should say. Facebook, you can find us at Shop This Little Piggy AR. And Instagram, you can find us at Shop This Little Piggy AR. But check us out. It's called This Little Piggy. And uh, see what we got to offer. ShopThisLittlePiggy.com. Hi, y'all. This is Brandon Bing, singer, songwriter, and whiskey maker. You're tuning into the Justin Moore Podcast. Visit EasyLiquor.com to grab your bottle of Bangtail Whiskey and join the Blue Collar Swaller family today. Follow us on all socials at Bangtail Whiskey for more news and updates. Now pour a jigger and take this a second ride with us. 
All right, everybody, welcome back to the Justin Moore podcast. Thank y'all for hanging in there with us today and tuning in. Uh, so had a blast. I don't know about you, Justin. That was great. I just thoroughly enjoyed talking with Carly. She's a sweetheart. And I mean, yeah, to put in the work and the adversity. And I didn't know that. I, I don't guess I probably remember you mentioning about her doing the, the show you did with Riley and those guys last year and her having her whole grill jacked up. That would, uh, God, I could only imagine. I mean, four days out from doing something, could you imagine losing your two front teeth and having a hole in your bottom Doing lip? something on national TV, including singing. Yeah. Um, and yeah. especially for, for a lady. I mean, you know, us guys, I mean, we're, we're all pretty hideous looking, even when we do have <laughs> yeah. all our teeth and, you know, all that good stuff. But, yeah, that was, it was it was wild. I, I didn't remember. Well, I, did, ever- I didn't remember that it, uh, you know, it was around the award show season, but uh, yeah, we did that, and we were like, all you know, she did that with Riley, BG, and myself, and we were all like, oh my gosh, you know. And she was really self conscious about singing. She was like, I'm afraid I'm gonna spit these teeth out, you know, this partial out or whatever, because um, she hadn't oh, yeah. sang at that point, you know. And you you use your not to get super technical but you use your tongue against your teeth you know to make certain sounds and stuff while you're singing and speaking um but uh yeah it it was pretty pretty wild so but uh i think you were going to go to whoever did her dental work you could you would never be able to tell yeah, I was gonna say whoever did her 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 mouth. I mean, it's perfect. She's beautiful. I mean, you can't even tell anything is different. Her teeth look yeah. normal. So. And like you said, uh, uh, just good. an absolute sweetheart. She's always been so kind to me, mm-hmm. and uh, she's super talented and a really good singer. She she talked about it. Does traditional country music, which you and I both love, and um, mm-hmm. appreciate her spending some time with us. So she's going straight from here to i believe a cmt interview um so i don't know if we're as pro but hopefully we're a little more fun i don't know but uh appreciate her coming well we're gonna win an award on this show one day and we're gonna she'll be able to mark that in her her book of stuff she was on an award-winning podcast there you go hopefully ours will get there for somebody else's but yeah uh i know we'd mentioned it briefly before we before we jumped on with carly and thank her for her time and uh, also thank you to our, our buddy brent cobb last week i hope everybody got a chance to check out his book is out now it came out father's day so y'all make sure to go check that out this week but we're gonna go into that and ask you about your father's day Justin. you said it wasn't nothing too crazy but uh how's everything uh around there because you got a you know, your dad's around there, another father, your granddad. There's all, a bunch of fathers around your neighborhood. How, how was Father's Day in Central yeah, Arkansas? Yeah, it was pretty low-key, which is great. I mean, we, we got up, went to church, and um, uh, came went and grabbed a bite to eat for lunch, and then came home. Kate made a uh, roast and uh, mashed potatoes and gravy and some, some soul food kind of stuff. But uh, my plan was to come home and lay on the couch and watch the U.S. Open. Um, but the kids all were begging me to take them swimming. So for Father's Day, I I got off the couch and I went outside and and swam with them for two or three hours. And, um, we had a good time. Uh, my parents came over, we exchanged gifts and, um, they ate with us. Kate, Kate cooked a, a great dinner and, and, uh. That was pretty pretty much it, man. It was pretty pretty low key, like I said. But uh, that was exactly how I would have drawn it up. So, how about you? I know you're down in uh, Charisse's neck of the woods uh, to visit her her pops. So, yep, yeah, it's good, man. Yeah, I'm in Terrebonne Parish. I'm down here in Homa, the birthplace of both our wives. And uh, yeah, we I got to town. You know, like I said, during the storm after we did our show last week and did my draft, and then yesterday. Uh, we went to eat uh, at Copeland's, uh, legendary Louisiana staple Copeland's from Al Copeland, who started Popeye's and and, and that stuff. But uh, had a really good filet, to be honest with you. I was impressed with my steak. Hadn't had a good steak in a while, but, boy, I had a good one yesterday. And uh, Yeah, I got to hang out with Paul T., my wife's dad. Uh, it was good to catch up with him. He's a hoot. Uh, he had had a little health thing a couple months ago. He's got all that sussed out, and he's he's rocking again, so that's good. Got to spend some time with my nephews. Who it's crazy. I, my wife and I've been together, you know, dating and then married five, but we've been together almost ten years, 
And uh, so my nephews are 12 now. So I've known them since they were two. And, and I, you know, I, I hadn't seen them most of the pandemic. So now they went from little boys to now they're teenagers. You know, they have braces. Their voices change. They're almost as tall as I am, just the whole thing. So it's a, it's a whole different thing than it used to be playing with them and hanging out with them. It's more like I, they're my buddies now. They always were my buddies, but they were little kids. And now they're like, you know, almost like adults, really. So yeah. uh, it was, it was, it's not like I can just goo goo gaga them anymore and make up stuff. And they just believe it because they're smart enough to know. You know, they're on social media, oh, yeah. they're on the computers, they they know how to do all that. So uh, it was good to hang out with them some, and uh, my sister in law and brother in law. And today we're at my mother in law's, and she's gonna cook some spaghetti for us later. So. I'm getting fired up about that, but I've got to get the pressure washer out. I got to get the lawnmower out. I've got a whole stack of chores to do before I actually fly out tomorrow to meet you to do a couple of radio shows, and then we've got a fair up in Martinsville, Indiana, Friday. We're going to go do so. I'm trying to get all my stuff together before I fly to Houston, which hopefully I get to fly to Houston. I hope I don't have to get Joey to try to get there from Nashville or something because they're claiming bad weather here and there. And I looked into a rental car and. It, it's just a, a crazy thing, and I heard about it on the news the other week. You just about can't get a rental car. Uh, they're like even a compact's like two hundred something dollars a day, and they're just not available wow. anywhere. I guess because the car shortage or what the deal is. So I've already looked into backup plans to get over there to meet you um, Wednesday, but uh, I don't know. We'll just have to see how it goes. Hopefully this rain dissipates, and I just get to my flight, and I got a direct over there. I'm like, let's some like this happen. So uh, right. so I'm just getting ready to do all that, you know. Um, and get back out and do some shows like you said, and then we'll take our Fourth of July break, and then we're we're really gonna ramp up um, after we get off the break. Yeah, then so. we hit it hard. Um, yeah. So uh, shifting gears, we we kind of mentioned I was doing something this morning and uh, tomorrow, which will be a few days ago to you guys. Um, the local sports uh, talk radio station here that. It, predominantly covers the hogs and 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 national sports as well um the buzz uh, you guys have heard us talk about our podcast being on the buzz 2 which is their secondary station there um airs this podcast the justin moore podcast but uh, uh they're one of their hosts uh is out for two or three weeks and um, a buddy of mine who co-hosts the, the morning show asked me if I would want to fill in for uh, a couple of days. And, and so I did that this morning. So I was up at four o'clock this morning, uh, because it's about an hour from my house. So I have to drive in, but uh, a whole lot of fun. It's called the show with no name. You can find it. You can probably Google it and listen to it on tune in radio and that kind of stuff. But great show. It's kind of barbershop radio, uh, sports, um, uh, you know, I guess current events, et cetera, but a lot of fun, uh, with those guys on, on there. So that's, that's what we were kind of referring to. I know just talking about being on that sports show, we'll make sure to put a link on our uh, podcast webpage. So everybody can find it. We'll get, make sure Cody gets that. Yeah. And those shows, um, I, I think always. you can listen to on SoundCloud, if I'm not mistaken, even after they're, they're done. Uh, but I'll, I'll, we'll figure gotcha. all that out and let you guys, uh, know. So. Yeah, we'll let we'll let Cody the Wizard behind all this uh, stuff. Make sure to get it up there for you guys to find. But you're talking about doing sports stuff, um, and I know we're out of baseball um, now, and we're going to move on to football, which I'm excited about. But uh, still got a little hoops happening. Watch the 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 finals are here now. It's going to be the Hawks and the Bucks, which your boy Bobby Portis may get a chance, which would be cool. Somebody suggested when you get him on the podcast, so maybe we don't want to mess him up during the season. But maybe after this is over, we'll see if we can get yeah. Bobby on. Um, and then on the other side is the Suns and the Clippers, um, which the first game um, they played yesterday, the Suns won without Chris Paul. Devin Booker put up 40. Kawhi Leonard was not on the Clippers, um, but uh, Paul uh, – uh, Chris Paul. No, nah, the, uh, the other – Paul George. Paul George, the one, the, yeah. For the Clippers. Yeah, Paul George, he's been playing huge in the playoffs, but didn't have enough to get over Devin Booker, which is one of Carly's uh, Kentucky Wildcats there. He's he's an emerging yeah, star. But anyway, stunned. that's the finals. That's what it's going to be. And between these four teams, uh, the last time any of these won a championship was in 76. So we're about to have a new NBA champion that hasn't been a champion since 76. A couple of these teams I don't think have ever been in. I, I want to say I saw it was the Clippers. It's been 51 years or something like that since they'd been – 
It was the most ever. The Clippers, if I'm not mistaken, as a franchise, if I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong. I don't think the Clippers have ever made the Western Conference Finals in 50 years. I yeah. think this is the first yeah, time. Yeah, I think that's what it was. Ever. Yeah. So I mean that that's ever. that's yeah. in, a, in a franchise that that's crazy. Uh, it's yeah, and wild. this year that being no LeBron, no KD, no Steph Curry. I mean the usual suspects just aren't there. This I know, year. I know so this the, is the, be a, that uh, the the the. You know, cable networks hate it because they wanted probably, you know, L.A. and Brooklyn uh, more than likely, mm -hmm. uh, you know, for ratings, et cetera. But I love the underdog, uh, you know, secondary market, so to speak, type teams winning. And matter of fact, I watched both game sevens uh, this past week uh, weekend, uh, both the, uh, the Bucks win – uh, over, um, was it the, uh, Brooklyn? The yeah, and, and then yep. um, uh, Atlanta's w win over um, Philly. Philly. Yeah, and just great finishes to both those games, and and both won on the road in a game seven. Uh, both, yep. both, I guess favorites got got beat. Wouldn't you say? Um, yep. Oh yeah. It was it was fun to watch Bobby. Uh, talking about Bobby Portis, he he didn't get to play a whole lot in this past series, but you know how the the NBA is, man. It's all about matchups, and I think yep. uh, a lot of it had to do with Durant in in the Nets series, and I think uh, he'll get to he'll get to play a little more in this upcoming series, and and um, he he's uh, he's had a really good year. He, he's shooting forty percent from three. Uh, this season, yep. which is insane because he's 6'11 or some crazy something. I mean, you, you think about that, it's crazy. And he's the guy that yeah, – well, he's the guy that don't get to play. He shoots 40% from three. Right, right. That's how good you have to be to be in the NBA. Well, it was just like last night you talking about the Philly game, which was – all these games have been great. It's usually the team who's up at the fir front first half, the other team makes a comeback to right. beat most of these games. Well, when Philly was ha still had a – a, not much of one, but a chance there at the end. It wasn't even one of their guards taking their threes. Joel Embiid, their center, was the one they set up a play to shoot yeah. the three. That would have never happened back in the day. You know, most of the time, big guys just – I mean, I was a huge Hakeem Olajuwon fan. I bet I saw him shoot one three-pointer ever, and it was in an all-star game, and it was just a joke at the end of the game. It just didn't happen, but that's the way it goes yeah. now. And uh, – Did you see – I got to say – Go ahead. Go ahead. ahead. No, I was just going to say, I got to say, uh, maybe Ben Simmons should have stayed at LSU another oh year or went to the gosh. NIT tournament and got his free throws You know what he out shot because, from the uh, free throw line in that series? It's like 30% yeah, 30, or something. 32%, I think. It's the lowest of all time for anybody in a did, series. I mean, he just broke Shaq's record, Dwight Howard, Did you everybody. see what Shaq said about it on the uh, the show uh, after? Um, Or hear what he said? Hold on, I'm gonna uh, find it and play it for you. But I gave everybody crap, and and I and I don't dis, and I'm not, I don't dis hate anyone. I just I, I almost root against him though because of the way he did LSU in the NIT. I was telling somebody at the thing the other day, after this went down, had that been any other player go to a school, and I understand you don't want to get hurt, your NBA prospects and this and that, but man, if your team goes to a tournament. It'd be hard to get me not to play. I just have to think in my mind: had that been Jordan or Kobe or even LeBron in that same situation, they would have played the tournament to try to win before they left college. But he just left, and obviously didn't practice his free throws because <coughs> that was evident. So in the, uh, I'm gonna play your. I'm gonna play series. you right now what Shaq said on the uh, post game show on TNT <laughs> about his LSU boy um, yep. and his performance. I mean, he was terrible. He was like two for. 16 from the field last 17. night or something yeah. stupid something and he was like that all all series it's a short clip but listen to this what, 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 what is incorrect about what he said if i play game one and two and i know i'm not helping my team out what you think i'm gonna do in game three don't take you seven games to realize that i don't want to hear that man i'm not going with that so what, what, I'm not, what should I'm he have said tonight i like what he said but if you like you can't say it don't take seven games for you to know you are not playing right. Get right. He Get can't. Right. He can't. He, it's, 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 he's not getting double teamed. Get right. Be aggressive. That's all I want. Just be aggressive. I don't want to hear all that. Stop that. Cut okay. it out. 
the, it up. The Atlanta Hawks knocking off the Philadelphia 76ers. He was in my locker room. I would have knocked his ass out. In 96. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You, you do Whoa. What? what you mean, what? I was having his, his locker room. You, you, you do what? <laughs> whoa whoa wow wow i can't wait to the, i can't wait to hear big shot bob uh on the on the robert ory podcast talk about that because you know us bama guys got to chuckle when they have some internal stuff isn't that hilarious is it, if he's in my locker yeah, room i'd have so. knocked his ass out it, yeah if it does, you don't wait till game seven to get right exactly i, I mean, mean that's wild it. you don't you wild know. It, you know it, you talk about how good the nba players are the ones that are on the bench and you know, um, I watched the end of the Hawks game uh, last night, uh, and it w- with Philly, obviously, who Simmons plays for, and Trey Young is their superstar, um, and he's he's mm-hmm. incredible. Uh, he's he's so good. Um, but uh, they had another guy uh, on the team last night that that I don't had. Close to 30 points, 27 points, I believe. I, mean, I forget his last name. Starts with an H, I believe. But but yeah. he was a first-round pick also the same draft they got Trey Young. And where I'm going with that is he was a first-round pick and went off last night in the playoffs. I've never heard his name before ever. And I'm a casual same. NBA fan, so granted, but – yeah. That's how good these guys are. Like, I've never even heard of this guy. I don't have a clue where he played college, if he's from overseas. Never seen him play before until last no. night. He just goes off. And he was a first-rounder yeah. also. So, how many of those guys yeah. are in the league where you're like, oh, yeah, he was a first-rounder. It makes sense. But it's crazy. Yeah, right. yeah I, same same boat. I'd never heard of him. He goes like off Herford for 27. Or Herbert he's, or something. Yeah, something Hor- like that. Horford or Herter. something. Yeah. And he's going one on one at their best players doing the turn, fade, jumper, and knocking them down. I mean, he's just and then he gets up, knocks down his free throws, no pressure, biggest stage he's ever been on. So hey, I got a I got I don't know what's going on with my computer, but per usual we don't we're not, not doing good. I've got my computer plugged in, it's showing me it's plugged in, but I'm down to eight percent. So we're gonna have to wrap this thing up this week. Justin's got stuff to do. I got some pressure washing to do, but I, I had a quick thing I want to run over here. Uh two little quick things. One was uh one of our questions we got from our old buddy Brett Bierbauer, uh on Twitter hit me up and said, uh, and this goes with Carly's uh, guest appearance today is why I want to do this. He said, uh, Q&A for the pod, who's your top five Mount Rushmore female country music? If y'all had to have mentioned it in previous podcasts, let me know. Mine is Pam Tillis, Reba McIntyre, Terry Clark, Leanne Womack, and Patty Loveless. So I, I, I dare, dare say Carly Pierce has probably got a similar list to you, Brett. Um, and I'm, I, you know, I got to throw in Leanne Womack and Patty Love was definitely probably on mine, which I, I love me some Terry Clark, and Pam Tillis as well. But I'd have to throw in um, probably Loretta Lynn. I mean, just because of the songs. And Tammy Wynette be hard. Not, and Dolly, I mean, was there any ever bigger than Dolly? That's a tough one. Everybody send theirs in on who y'all think is your Mount Rushmore female. Uh, country singers over the years and uh, see what we can come up with a list and just now get our list together a little better and come back with that next week and uh i had a new I segment mine, i thought I think, about trying it do you you want to go ahead and do them i got seven percent we got time i got three of them anyway okay um leanne womack dolly parton patsy klein that's three yeah, of them i mean yeah for me for sure and Pat's- no doubt about it and Patsy passed at 30 in a plane yeah. crash. Imagine had she lived another 30 years I don't years know where so. I'd go with that so, fourth, but uh, that definitely would be my, my the three. three of mine. But. Okay, well, I'll get a better list together for mine, too. And I had a, I had a segment. We've done, the, we've done the Mount Rushmore enough to where I think we've about wore that thing out. So I thought of a new thing that might be kind of fun to do, and y'all let me know. I don't know exactly how we want to do it. It kind of goes with the old uh, – which one would you rather, you know, you name off three or four things, which one would you do this with, that one with, this one. And I thought for our sake of country music, it was be what, who would you rather, duet, tour, or duo, or band, or something like that. It was like, would you rather have a big duet, a huge number one song of the year like Carly and Lee had last year, a duet with, with a buddy, male or female, 
would you rather go on be a, in a duo with them, like a Brooks and Dunn or like a Montgomery? Would you rather be a duo? And I put band because I was thinking about bands. Would you rather be in like a quartet or a band in the band with them or on a tour with them? There's other things we could do with that. But That's I thought, a great so idea. We'd name so it's three an F. Mary Kill, but with – there you yes, go. Exactly. That's a great idea. I was, yeah, I like that's it. what I, I was trying to think. Of. I, so I don't know exactly what the three things would be, but three things like that. So it'd be like, say, you and Lee and Randy, or if, or, or say, Randy, Lee, and uh, Jamie, just say. And it'd be like, who would you rather be in a duet with, have a big duet with, go on tour with for a year, or be a duo for the, your whole career with? I like it. So I guess that would be like a long longevity like thing. It. So we'll put that out there. We'll get some lists going. Y'all send me three you'd like for me to ask Justin, and we'll get a we'll start getting that going in the next couple of weeks. Um, so that was what I thought on that, and then we'll get with uh, with the female Mount Rushmore back, and that's really all I've got. Just like every week, I want to tell everybody, encourage everybody to go to your website, justinmoremusic.com. Check out all our tour dates we have coming up. Check out Justin's new merchandise. I saw some on the road this past week. Got the new hats. Got some new koozies, new shirts. They all look killer. Um, like I said, check that out. You can go look at the tour page and, and the shows where we're played. You can see how to get tickets. You can definitely find every way to watch and listen to this Justin Moore podcast, which we hope you do each and every week. Go ahead and click that like, subscribe, rate, uh, notifications button, all that fun stuff. Leave us a five-star review and a little short write-up if you, if you don't mind. We sure appreciate it. That helps us do this thing each and every week for you, free of charge. Um, and go to the jrthehandler.com site if you want to check out my swag. I've got some new shirts up. I'm actually working on some new stuff. You can check that out. Uh, go to carlypierce.com. See where Carly's playing. Go check her out when she's in a town near you. You will not be disappointed. She's a phenomenal talent. And go get her new record, 29, if you haven't gotten that yet. Download it. It came out a few months ago. It's a great record. Like she said, it's got that real traditional sound. I, I've been listening to it the last week or so. It's really a good record. And she actually, I didn't mention it to her. I didn't ask her about it. But she put out a live version of the duet she did with Lee that you could get on um, Apple or get on your music stuff too. So that was really pretty cool. But that's really about all I got for this week, Just. We're going to come back next week. We've got an absolute legend on next week, uh, William Lee Golden from the, the Oak Beard. Ridge Boys, which I just got – the beard. I just got his book. Uh, they got you one on the way. I don't know if it's found your house yet. Sweet. But y'all check this out. And um, I'm going to work on it. Hopefully I'll have some insight when we talk to – my Alabama buddy, Mr. William Lee Gold, next week. And, uh, yeah, that's about all I got. I want everybody to have a safe and happy rest of their week and weekend as we gear up for a big 4th of July weekend. And like you and Carly were talking earlier, shows are coming back. People are moving around. I'm looking forward to a big yeah, summer. Yeah, for sure. And after next week with William Lee Golden, uh, we'll be coming to you, both of us, from the beach. Uh, that's right. We'll be there in a, in, a, in short order. Um so, That's right. Thank you guys for tuning in. And I talked listening. We appreciate it. Yeah, I was going to, I was going to say real quick too. And I talked to Cody and Jeff. They've got us put together a package, so we'll have stuff for the road. So this summer, you will be hearing some of these podcasts come from the bus or backstage at a festival with some cool people. So awesome. I'm pumped Very about cool. that. We're getting all that together now. Yeah, for sure. Awesome. All right, everybody. Well, thank you all again for tuning in this week's edition of the Justin Moore Podcast. We appreciate y'all doing so. Until next week, y'all stay safe out there. Pay attention when you're driving. Love everybody around you. Love more than you hate. And uh, be kind to one another, and we'll see you next week. Thanks, guys. Cheers. For any of you first-time listeners out there, at the end of each of our episodes, uh, I like to do a little reading out of a book I've had that I've got a lot of use out of over the years. Uh, the book is by Mr. Charlie Daniels, uh, and the book is called Let's All Make the Day Count, The Everyday Wisdom of Charlie Daniels. Number 12, Excuses and Complaints, Do All Things Without Murmurings and Disputings, Philippians 2.14. There was a time in my life when I had an excuse for practically every shortcoming I own. Usually it was a way of blaming something or someone else and I complained about everything that displeased me. In other words, I was not willing to take responsibility for my own actions. It was just like saying that everything is completely out of your control and that you'll have to spend your life being blown here and there by any wind that comes along. It is an immature and petulant attitude. You soon have to admit that you're not doing your homework assignment was not because you ran out of notebook paper or you didn't hoe the garden because you couldn't find a hoe or you made bad grades because your teacher didn't like you. Telling everybody working in a 100-degree tobacco field that it's hot over and over when they already know it 
and are going through the same thing you are is a waste of time and irritating to those who have to listen. But when you enter the workplace and real responsibilities fall on your shoulder, when excuses don't cut it and complaints fall on deaf ears, where the competition is tough and not meeting deadlines means a one-way trip back to the farm, reality sets in. You grow up in a hurry or sit on the wayside and watch the rest of the world march off and leave you behind. Making bogus excuses is lying and complaining is just your way of saying that you want everybody else to be as miserable as you are. Let's all make the day count. <laughs>